So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where the Byzantine Empire returns to the modern world. Now the Byzantine Empire is basically the remnant of the Roman Empire, or at least the Eastern Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire collapsed due to invasions from barbarians. But the Eastern Roman Empire kind of survived on its own for a little bit until eventually kind of got crushed down, eventually was taken over by the Ottomans. But the Byzantines were there for a little bit of time in uh, history. So we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where that empire comes back to the modern day. So as you can see, I have highlighted a portion of the Byzantine Empire here. Now, I'm not exactly sure what time period this is from. This is a section of it because it was always changing. It was always getting bigger. It was mostly getting smaller, but it was changing. Uh, but as we can see here, the Byzantines consisted of Greece, Turkey, Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, basically all of the Balkans, a little bit of Crimea, and a little bit of Italy. Now, there are some notable things here. Um, the map that I was looking at, once again, don't know when what time period it is from, but it did have these listed as um, anonymous principalities. So if it doesn't exactly line up with the Byzantines and how they look, then that's why but i just went ahead and incorporated those into the actual empire itself also forgot to color this in but yeah we're going to be seeing what exactly happens with the byzantine empire resurfacing in the modern days so if you guys do enjoy this video make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new all the support is greatly appreciated there could be some excited things happening soon with the channel can't tell you what because it's a surprise but if i do get the time to do it then uh there's some might be some exciting things happening and yeah let's go ahead and just jump straight into this video and also i do apologize i do have to make this video sort of short i'm on a very uh tight time crunch of a lot of things that have been happening with me in my personal life lately um and i haven't really had time to record uh but i do have a very brief window that i need to that i can record in and i'm going to utilize that right now so this video seemed a little bit rushed which i'm going to try to make it not be and you know the video link's probably gonna be pretty short so i do apologize for that anyway the byzantines are here they're back and they're probably weak and that's because they're made up of a lot of different cultures specifically balkan cultures and those don't mix well together at all but let's ignore that because otherwise this video would be impossible you know greece and turkey are a country united together that's impossible on its own um also we have to ignore nato because if nato existed then this thing could not expand and that would be no fun so the first thing that happens with the byzantine empire is well they get invaded ukraine is going to go ahead and invade them in order to reconquer their land over here in crimea in which they do so successfully they also move troops into the romanian portion of the byzantine empire but stop and agree to peace with the byzantines over here in constantinople in this peace treaty ukraine gains co full control over all of crimea and no changes happen over here so that is left alone but ukraine does get all of their land back in Crimea, which makes them happy. And they go ahead and sign a peace deal with the Byzantines as well as a um, non-aggression pact. That's pretty significant because, you know, you can't invade each other anymore unless you violate it you're german so now what do the byzantines do they have a lot of weak people around them such as like slovenia italy is probably weakened uh rome is on the cusp of being captured turkey is basically just not existent and this could make for some interesting events taking place but for now we do have slovenia and croatia uniting together because croatia does still exist uh, the byzantines didn't have this in the map that i looked at and uh so that's just croatia um that's extremely weak so they go ahead and unite with slovenia and speaking of slovenia um sorry guys you're being invaded. Yeah, the Balkans aren't catching any breaks in this video. It's going to be harsh. It's going to be rough. So the Byzantines start their invasion of Slovenia. They capture their capital, of which I cannot pronounce. It's like, live I'm, you see, I'm not going to even try. I don't even want to try. Anyway, they're gone now, so we can take a look at this peace treaty. Oh, would you look at that? They got fully annexed. Okay, so the Byzantines now have firm control over all of the Balkans. You can make an argument for Romania, I guess. But the Southern Balkans are now under firm control of the Byzantine Empire. With this, they're going to look to continue to expand. And maybe even try to reform the Roman Empire, which they once were a part of. Uh, but religion ruined that, so it's okay. You can stay away from the Catholics, because the Orthodox, they're better. I'm just kidding. I'm not religious, so I have no say in the argument. Okay, but their next target is actually going to go ahead and be the Turks. You thought I was going to click on Italy. Not yet. The Turks are extremely weak. Yeah, they're just weak. They have no one. They have there's nothing else to say. They're weak. They lost all of their population, all their major cities. Of course, there's still like some over here, but not significant enough to fully run the country to its true potential, which said true potential is being hindered by the fact that the Byzantine Empire is suddenly here doesn't matter though turkey's gone and uh, i guess it's thanksgiving because this thing's all carved up but yeah byzantines fully annex turkey giving them a little bit more power not much because once again this section was pretty weak but it does give them access to the middle east and iran does not like the existence of the byzantines neither does saudi arabia but these two will never be caught working together so that doesn't really mean much you know who doesn't really care about the byzantines is and is kind of happy that they're back israel they're happy but we're not going to talk about israel in this video because that's an ongoing event don't want to get in trouble. Anyway, remember how I was talking about Italy earlier? Yep. 
it's their time to go so the byzantines and all their might and glory push into sicily the giant mountain and take it they also move in towards the venice area and have huge success in taking parts of the country the issue is that they have some ops and those ops are going to take advantage of the byzantines lacking aka the romanians they're going to try to steal their way out of this one i mean their land was stolen first so it's fair so they take back their portion and they offer peace over to the Byzantines and well, they're not allowed peace. Their peace was never an option. So kind of sucks for them as the Byzantines push into the Romanian countryside. They also push Iver over and into Rome, major city there that's gone. And so is Italy. Hungary is going to go ahead and join this war to get on in on this third party. And while they do that, the Byzantines take back, back their Romanian land. And well, from here, it's basically a slaughter. Um, the Hungarians and the Byzantines agree to work together in this war. And um, well, it doesn't end well for Romania. They lose. So now we can go ahead and take a look at this peace treaty. All right. So taking a look at this peace treaty here, you probably expected this, but the Byzantines are going to take a large chunk of land out of Europe. Big surprise there. Italy is left alive. Um, they're left here in here for now and uh they're in pain so uh sardinia is actually gonna go ahead and break away and form their own country uh france might be looking at them kind of weird they might want that it's fine though italy's still here barely uh and hungary took over transylvania from romania or most of it other than that uh, the hungarians and the byzantines are now working together and uh that might not be a thing historically maybe it is i don't know i need to touch up on that part of history i'm not really good with it i'm i'm like better with like modern history and stuff like 1900s past that maybe a little bit of the 1800s but mostly 1900s like the napoleonic wars i kind of got that Ooh, it's complicated over here yeah it's it's a lot i need to touch up on history it's fine though it's fine for doing makeshift scenarios it doesn't even matter speaking of um makeshift scenarios austria is going to unite with hungary and together they're going to form austria hungary and uh well they're going to annex slovakia but we, we didn't have to see those details they're a little too gruesome so slovakia is annexed by austria hungary and uh well, guess who's next Czechia. czechia i was about to say czechoslovakia but they don't exist so the austria hungarians will declare war on czechia and this is gonna kind of spiral out of control. So yes, the Austro-Hungarians do push into Czechia, but Germany has something else to say about that. They don't really like Austria uniting with Austria-Hungary. They don't really like the fact that Czechia is getting pushed into, so they're gonna intervene. First, they're gonna go ahead and try to take Vienna, in which they managed to do successfully, since this was kind of like a, a sneak attack. And then they're gonna reinforce the border of Czechia and help them push back the Austro-Hungarians. Issue with that is now the Byzantines are involved, and we know that the Germans and the Byzantines have beef, you know, the German barbarians. But apparently it's not just German that has beef because ukraine is going to violate that um that, remember that the non-aggression pact i was talking about yeah that just got violated i told you i mean i'm not comparing ukraine to germany but you know what i mean so the ukrainians will join this war on the side of the germans and the czechians and this is going to kind of cause like a, a big european clash specifically centralish eastern european but the ukrainians are going to have their way over here in romania while the germans and the czechians work well together in pushing back the austrian hungarians at this time though there's going to be another person that joins this war and this may be surprising but probably not it's actually going to be the russians the russians are always causing trouble and ruining things so uh let's go ahead and ruin ukraine that's right for once we're going to see ukraine get gang banged not russia maybe it's about time russian troops push into ukraine from all sides now i used to reference the ukraine war in retrospect to like how ukraine would be invaded we're not doing that anymore um the ukraine war in real life is just stalemated right now like there's basically nothing happening at least that i know of uh, the byzantines will land in crimea and liberate their portion of land with open arms as the crimeans go ahead and kind of rise up against the ukrainians but in favor of the byzantines not the russians there could be some issues with russia later on between them in the byzantines but uh for now let's focus on well ukraine dying yeah it doesn't go well they lose their capital kiev that's not good poland could join this war but they're not going to that would be probably not good for them the austria hungarians finally push back the germans and the byzantines are pushing back the ukrainians all in all the ukrainians are kind of collapsing um they're fighting a two-front war which is never a good thing in real life they're now losing their portions of land over here in the Lviv region kharkiv gets captured by the russians and a ginormous encirclement takes place over here near donbass with that the area is forced to surrender and with only one major city remaining which is falling to the byzantines the ukrainians are going to be forced to surrender i mean i know in real life they wouldn't actually surrender but once again this is a fictional scenario so all right so ukraine is gone womp womp but germany and czechia are still 
Okay, here comes the Byzantines. Yeah, the Byzantines have a freakish amount of troops and uh, it's gonna kind of scare the Germans out of this war. So Germany is gonna go ahead and just say, you know what? We lost a lot of people. It's okay though, we're gonna leave. And everyone's okay with that, you know. Germany's kind of far away from the Byzantine Empire, or I guess the core of it. So they're, they're okay with Germany. They're not, they weren't going to get any land from them anyway. But now we can take a look at a peace treaty. All right, so looking at the peace treaty here, we can see that Eastern Europe is looking a lot differently. So most notably, Ukraine has been carved up like a pumpkin. They're not doing too good, but it's fine. They still have leave, and that's really about it. The Byzantine Empire went ahead and helped themselves to taking all of Moldova, a uh, portion of Romania slash Ukraine up here that used to be a part of Romania. And then they went ahead and took over this coastal area of Ukraine. Now for Crimea, it is a little bit interesting here because they do have overlapping claims with the Russians, but they were able to work something out where the Russians have complete control over the Sea of Azov as well as a little bit of coastline over here. But the Byzantine Empire does retain a majority of the Crimean Peninsula. As for Austria-Hungary, um, they got Czechia and they got a little bit of land over here. This part of, of Czechoslovakia, which is now Ukrainian in real life, they got that back. And uh, yeah, so uh, we can go ahead and take a look at this new trifecta alliance thing, which is between the Byzantines, the Russians, and the Austria-Hungarians. Not sure how realistic something like this would actually be, but this could kind of renaissance Europe into like an old classical time. Like we could have France and Belgium being one country. The Danes could have a portion of Sweden. The Baltics, actually, that would probably just be Russian. The Germans could have their old claims in Poland that looked like that. I mean, Italy could splinter. Uh, Spain could splinter. That would be kind of cool, like having like a classical kind of map like that. And it would all be stemmed from the reemergence of the Byzantine Empire, which is uh, went ahead and expanded itself pretty nicely. But do remember. The beginning of this video i did say that i would have to make this video fairly short and uh yeah we're out of time so i am really sorry for that um there is so much more i could have done with this video like i wanted to have the byzantines expand into africa like taking portions of libya maybe even egypt i wanted them to go over here take sardinia i wanted them to finish off italy move into france but i just don't have time for it so i'm sorry for that um I will try to manage my time better, even though the stuff that's been happening has been way out of my control. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to show some support, subscribing, liking, you can become a channel member. Uh, oh, I gotta add you guys' names at the end of the video. I forgot about that. I should have time this weekend, so I'll do it then. Actually, no, I don't have time this weekend. I'll do it eventually. But yeah, support's greatly appreciated, especially right now, YouTube is uh, tripping. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. And of course, thank you to all the super fans, which include Matthew Newman, Yam Yam, Kali Speaks Plays, Shadow Gamer Z, Deva Edits, Mr. Bonk7, Hammer Toad 45, Patrick Clauser, Connor the Gamer, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.